plan for the future, particularly in my position, is you know going into those areas once again that have not been touched and um, serviced, like 3126 and all the other zip codes in the uh, Shelby County area who are disproportionately impacted and have little to no access to health care. Thank you, Dwayne. Peace. Hey. <laughs> so I like to think um, the beginning of, of Peace was a prevention program that was um, designed to meet people um, where they are literally because mm -hmm. the program would go to them. Mm -hmm. Instead of having them have to come to us, the program would go to them and go to them anywhere that they were. Mm -hmm. um, so when we added the harm reduction as the harm reduction, excuse me, aspect to things, it taught us to not only continue to go to where people already are, but to also involve them more and deeply into um, asking them what they need besides just this test. Mm -hmm. um, that was very meaningfully inclusive um, of their opinions and their needs. So for me, that was um, a really big part because we were able to add through having harm reduction training certain important aspects that weren't as key to each program that we have. Mm -hmm. So in all of our programs now, we've developed surveys to get specifically needs from these people that we already thought we were meeting their needs, mm -hmm. but these were needs that maybe some of us want to meet for them. Yeah, we need to easy. know what they need mm -hmm. met. Um, so that's a big part of harm reduction um, that we've added to these. And I think it's important that each organization and outreach, um, outreach specialist, outreach person, outreach counselor, adds that to their everyday life when dealing with people that we're trying to reach. Thank you. Kayla. <laughs> Can I get the question one more time? <laughs> uh, Y'all killing me. Okay. So the, chat. The, the word, okay, I put it in the chat. The word meaningful involvement, right? Yeah. How does your organization show up in the community and incorporate harm reduction into the community and the people that you all serve? Okay, so um, when you said meaningful involvement, I was thinking about that because I was on a call earlier today, um, a webinar, and it was like 300 people on there, and I talked to them about MEPA, meaningful involvement of people affected. I always refer back to Denver, uh, the Denver principles when I'm talking about public health and trans issues and Black Lives Matter issues because we have to be involved in this process. And I always tell people that it's not necessary that we're involved in the solution, but once we identify what the problem is, it's up to the other people who've done the harm to actually do the work because that's that's related to trauma. And I've had people to say, you're always about money. And I'm not, it's not about the, the dollar. It's really, oh, yes, if, you want, <laughs> if you want people to do some work that you don't wanna do or that you can't do, um, you should compensate them for that, especially when it's dealing with harm and violence um, and reliving trauma and not necessarily processing that trauma. But to the question, uh, how we're doing that um, is through our survival kits. So we, before COVID, we were doing survival kits with our street team and our street team would go out once a month and we would provide seasonal clothing, um, our survival kits, which are like chunk full of a lot of different things, uh, hygiene kits, um, uh, harm reduction kits, which are like Narcan or the syringe kits uh, if someone over, uh, overdoses through uh, IV use. Um, and then also doing our Know Your Rights workshops on the street with people who are engaging in sex work or who are engaging in drug use. Uh, and also empowering folks who come through our housing program or access some of our resources to be able to be advocates within that network. Uh, because I know a lot of times that's how, that's how I got into advocacy. It's because I was out, I was doing sex work, I was homeless, I was hanging out with some other homeless folks. They invited me to a meeting and the meeting had food. So that's why I kept coming. But then I something grabbed a hold to me at one of those meetings and I was like, this is meaningful. Um, a year later, after doing protests, we shut down a harmful shelter here in Memphis, Beers Van Gogh Center. Um, and that's what it, it, it kind of like ignited something in me. I was like, we weren't just standing on corners holding signs looking cute. We were actually including change. Um, so yeah, that's 
my response to that question.